she. <laughs> Very cold weather for me. Hope she and bundled up. Yes, that. and 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 you she, know we have the uh, the annual Thanksgiving bicycle ride in, oh, in Oriental, Oriental this morning, yes. beginning at beginning at nine o'clock, which I usually take part in. Okay. But since it was going to be probably below freezing. You figured, you'd uh, I, I, I decided I'd, <laughs> I'd rather hang out with you, Bill. Than, well, uh, I, than I take great honor of that. I'm, I'm much better to be with in really cold weather. So Your wife's going to make you trade with her next year. She'll be here, and you'll be down at the turkey run. Uh, very possibly. <laughs> By then, she'll, she can probably talk better than me anyway. So anyway, it is Thanksgiving and the day of turkey and parades and celebrations and um, or uh, mortifications, depending on whether you are... European or Native American, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But, uh, now, now, Perry, you are from another land originally. Yes, I'm from Norway. And I was just wondering myself, uh, does Norway have anything like like this? I mean, no. I know they don't have Thanksgiving Thanksgiving. Well, they, but... they, uh, uh, they don't have anything formal like this. Um, uh, quite often they will have what they call a hest fest, uh, which means a, a fall festival. Basically, a, okay. a harvest festival, but uh, there's there's no national holiday. Okay. You guys have any particular uh, Thanksgiving memories or traditions that y'all do? I always remember. Uh, yeah, I lived with my grandmother, and her her saying, "All right, everyone, get your crap off the table," because ninety percent <laughs> of the time, the dining room table was covered in stuff, paperwork, or toys, whatever we were doing, and. Uh, we'd have to. There was like the one day of the year, that and Christmas, we had to go clean the uh, dining room table off. You know, I'd get my model kits because I was into building models and stuff. I had to put it all away for this. So, so you carry it on to this day, right? That's right. I, that's probably where it started. Yeah, it's. Uh, I got to mess up the table so I can clean it tomorrow. That's yep, yep. <laughs> okay, I'm, you got any kind of traditions at all in particular? I mean, Thanksgiving is one of those things where there's really, <coughs> it's dinner. Yeah, maybe a parade, maybe maybe college football. Yeah, not not really. I mean, we we sort of you know being immigrants, uh -huh. we just sort of brought into the tradition as it's you know uh, laid out for us in Reader's okay. Digest, you know, yeah. Saturday yeah. Post and all that. Uh, but uh, yeah. yeah, okay. And this is just... our neat little segue into just what Thanksgiving is all about. It's one of our oldest holidays unofficially, mm -hmm. and uh, even officially, it's a good going on 150, 102, 200 years old. Well, the actual Thanksgiving event that we celebrate, the Pilgrims and Native Americans, uh, which may or may not have happened as is depicted in the, uh, by Norman Rockwell, um, took place exactly 400 years ago today. It took place in 1621. Uh, the Pilgrims arrived in Plymouth Colony in 1620. They had a really hard winter. Half of them died. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to celebrate their survival and the harvest, they had this, uh, had this festival, which lasted for three days. And the Native Americans showed up. There were, the Native Americans probably outnumbered the Pilgrims. Uh, they brought venison. Uh, there was uh, seafood. There was pumpkins and beans. No turkeys, no but cranberry I sauce. Uh, popcorn was introduced then. I have maybe, read that. Maybe, maybe some of the <laughs> corn uh, fell. Popcorn uh, was introduced to the Americans by the Indians at, well, yes. at Plymouth Rock. Now the, the holiday wasn't made official until 1863, <coughs> when uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, declared it as a kind of a thank you for the Civil War victories at Vicksburg and uh, Gettysburg. And uh, I was. Looking at this, and, and uh, I found some fun facts. Uh, what does the poem Mary Had a Little Lamb have to do with Thanksgiving? <laughs> okay, yeah, All right. We're looking forward well, to this one. You're, you're, or, uh, I'm, I'm glad you asked me that, because <laughs> I am going to tell you uh, that the first official proclamation of a national <laughs> Thanksgiving holiday didn't come until 1863, when uh, Lincoln called for an annual Thanksgiving celebration on the final Thursday of November. The proclamation was the result of years of impassioned lobbying by Mary Had a Little Lamb author. I probably didn't realize that Mary Had a Little Lamb actually had an author. I didn't know it was American. Mm -hmm. right? Yes, the abolitionist Sarah Josepha Hale. Uh, and she lobbied uh, for this. Uh, another fun fact is that in 1926, President Calvin Coolidge 
uh, received a somewhat odd Thanksgiving gift from uh, a man in uh, Mississippi who sent him a raccoon. Oh, cool. Yes. <laughs> uh, and, and Yes. <laughs> the Thanksgiving <laughs> raccoon. Yeah, they're yeah, very exactly oh, right. wait. I forgot that memory. That <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, my, yeah, we also yeah. do the... Yeah, yeah, hey, I had to <laughs> grab that raccoon to yeah. have him on the table. And, uh, yeah, well, it was it was meant to be eaten. Uh, the, uh, uh, <laughs> the man who sent it... Uh, 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 recommended it to the president uh, that it was very toothsome. That's what he said, toothsome. Uh, luckily, uh, the Coolidge family adopted the pet, named it Rebecca. Rebecca was only the latest addition uh, to their already substantial White House menagerie that included a black bear, a wallaby, and a pygmy hippo named Billy. There you go. <laughs> so there you are. Of course, Rebecca would go on to marry uh, a raccoon named Rocky. Right? <laughs> yes. He had a hippo walking around the White House lawn. Uh, I pygmy know. hippo. Well, pig. it <laughs> yes, it was. It was a pygmy hippo. It, it yeah. left so, so. pygmy piles to be. <laughs> up it, and, but uh, the reason why I ask this isn't this the time frame where your average everyday citizen could literally just go to the White House? Nineteen twenty-six. I don't know. Uh, yeah. uh, maybe. Maybe. Yes. Yeah, well, Andrew Jackson had the uh, the ball where people were stealing everything. Yeah, I think it was. I can't yeah. remember when they stopped doing that, but yeah, you used to be able to just walk up. Yeah, like ring the doorbell and be like, "Hey, you got a minute?" Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Lincoln was known to have had uh, his house continually filled by people begging for office, and they yes. were never stopped. They could walk right in on them. That's right. That's right. Um, and in my research, I, I, I found out that uh, uh, there was a president that refused to recognize Thanksgiving. Indeed. Yes, uh, Thomas Jefferson. Oh. He famously uh, uh, refused to declare days of Thanksgiving and fasting in the United States. Yeah, it was Thanksgiving, and it was also days of fasting, which is totally contrary to what we're, what we're up to today. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, but you know, unlike his political rivals, the Federalists, Jefferson believed in a wall of separation between church and state. Uh, we've got to find a way to put this into honor. And <laughs> I think you should. And, and believe, yes, yes. And uh, believed that endorsing such celebrations as president would amount to state sponsored religious worship. Uh, yeah. He, he just man. didn't want to admit that Sally Hemings was refusing to vote <laughs> that day. <laughs> now, Bill. <laughs> or he, he didn't want to recognize. Didn't uh, Ben Franklin want the turkey to be our national bird? Maybe. Uh, he, yes. Maybe we don't, we don't do. know how serious he was about it, but he definitely wrote a letter describing the turkey as a bold bird. Of course, he didn't mean the domestic turkey, which is an immensely stupid animal. Oh, no, yeah. it's, no, it's um, not, Bill. No, the it's domestic. Not. Is, I've, oh, oh, the, the I've domestic been told by turkey raisers just the other day that the they will literally drown in the rain looking up at it. Now, a yes. wild turkey is a brilliant bird. There was a there was a uh, a documentary on PBS last night called uh -huh. "My Life as a Turkey." <laughs> Seriously, this was a man who hatched. I could call that my autobiography. Right? Right? <laughs> <You're> like, <"Hey, laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Sort of. <laughs> Part of my life yes, uh, could be described as my life as a turkey. But anyway, this man hatched turkeys, and the turkeys imprinted on him and followed him around for a year. And he studied them and, and, and what they do, and, and uh, they're really quite – as a matter of fact, he actually learned how to talk turkey. <laughs> this, okay. is, this, is true. this is true, friends. Uh, well, we have to get him on the show here. Right? right? That would be fascinating. And then Thanksgiving rolled around. The turkey whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> they cut the documentary right no. before. And uh, they have, how, how in turkey do you say, how could you? Right. That's, they have specific sounds, apparently, for – Look, there's a snake. Or look up, there's a hawk. Different mm. sounds. Yes. Okay. So, uh, you know, these are... So, uh, at any rate, it's the 400th anniversary. And uh, okay, I think we're all going to celebrate in some form or fashion today. Now, in, in 1941 is when uh, the president declared that Thanksgiving would be on the fourth Thursday rather than the last Thursday. That was a yes. bit of a problem to the merchants who were not getting their Christmas sales like they wanted, and they, they had been pushing for years, and finally he gave in. That plays mm -hmm. into a little bit of New Bern history in as much as we had a huge fire in 1922, took out a quarter of a town, mm. and it happened on December 1st, mm. and the day before, November 30th, was Thanksgiving. 
Mm. And a lot of people were celebrating what they were about to lose big time. Mm. <laughs> and uh, also, the we we see every year the annual uh, pardoning of the turkeys at the White House. And yes. uh, some years is more appropriate than others, depending on your party. And uh, that began under George Bush. Well, actually, officially. Officially, yes. Officially uh, under George Bush. John John Kennedy actually was the first American president to spare turkeys. Like was he? Yes. Uh he said, we'll just let this one grow. Uh, it's our Thanksgiving present to him. Okay. And then uh, that tradition continued. It was a tradition, but it was made official by George H.W. Bush in 1989. Uh, yes. So every year a pair of turkeys get an extension on their life, and they, they're sent off to a petting zoo or something. I'm not sure yes. what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe to the pygmy hippo farm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget about the wallabies now. That's uh, that's important. To... Yes, as well. Wallaby. <laughs> anyway, John. Hey, how are you again? I'm I'm great. Uh, now, sure. John is the the president, executive director. Executive director. I could never figure out whether anybody had the president or an executive director of the Bank of the Arts. Tell us a little bit about what's going on there and what you do. Yeah, so uh, right now we've got Critters going on, which is our normal holiday exhibition. It's November, December, and the whole gallery's filled with animals and things like that. There you go. I have one or two insignificant little drawings in that, actually. There's a lot of great, yeah, small pieces that are great gifts. You know, you find an animal you really love, things like that. And actually, this year we're going to do something I've been trying to do for four years or something like that. And we're going to host Colonial Capital Humane Society in the gallery. We're going to put tarps down on stuff, <laughs> and, and, but uh, we're going to have them with the dogs and cats in the in the gallery with the art exhibition of the animals. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. And we'll also be doing puppy painting. So we're going to you take a canvas board, put some globs of paint on it, put it in like a Ziploc, put some peanut butter on there, and the dog licks the peanut butter off and smears all the paint around, and you get a little abstract painting, and any sales of those are going to benefit uh, us and the Humane Society will split it 50-50. Sounds like a great idea. And that is when again? That'll be December 4th. So December 4th. Uh, mm -hmm. 11 to 2. 11 to 2 at the Bank of the Arts. Mm -hmm. And that is on, what is the address? That's a Saturday. Right? Yeah, that'll be. And Bank of the Arts is what, what street number? Oh, mid, uh, 317 Middle. 317 right next Middle. to the Cow Cafe. No one seems to recognize our building. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little imposing. I mean, it's a big granite yeah, bank. Yeah, it's this big giant well, yeah. not for, for a bank, it's not big, but it's yeah, you know, yeah, it's it's a building that really stands out, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, it's just fun to go in there and just look around. And the gallery is great, and then in back, you walk in through that vault and in, into the gift area, I guess you mm -hmm. call that the gift exchange room, whatever. And they've got some great artwork anytime you want to take a look around. Mm -hmm. We yeah. just had the clock <coughs> repaired too, actually. So oh. Um, the clock for the building hasn't worked since I started there. We're not quite sure when it messed up, but we had a <coughs> mechanism removed and sent to a guy. And uh, he, the same guy actually worked on the History Center's clock. Oh, one okay. of the same guys. I think several guys worked on that. He was one of them and uh, had a new clock face put in. Um, I actually have the original clock face, which after looking at it, we're pretty sure is the original clock face for the building. Okay. Uh, but it had faded terribly. Uh, you couldn't read the number. Even with it yeah. out, I can't read the, barely read the numbers. That uh, building goes back, I think, to about 1910, thereabouts. Thereabouts, yeah. We're not 100% certain. There's a couple dates. It looks like maybe they started construction, but it took mm -hmm. them several years to finish, or for some reason there was a pause. So it um, looks like it may have been started in 1913 and finished in 1917, but we've also found other dates and, mm -hmm. and odd articles and things over the years. Yeah, and you've got up in the upper chambers there a large uh, framed front page edition of the Sun, I think it was the Sun Journal. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And uh, article featuring the Bank of the Arts and all the stuff, well, the, the, at the bank, not as of the arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I took pictures of that once and I managed to get two or three history columns just for just reading those, <laughs> a lot of weird, bizarre stories on the front page of it. Talked about a lady who'd gone to Arizona and watched a snake dance, and giving all her her interpretations of what this Navajo snake dance was. Uh, most of them were wildly wrong, but it was entertaining to read. And uh, there was a some kind of a, a play being produced that it talked about, and a couple of murder trials it was talking about, and just all these weird, mm. weird things going on. But it was interesting. 
And how old is the Bank of Yards? How long has it been around? We've been there since uh, 80, 86 in our current iteration. So okay. uh, we were actually formed through the merger of two other nonprofit organizations, the Craven Community Arts Council um, and the New Bern Gallery, mm-hmm. which is why our, our name is now Craven Arts Council and Gallery. That was, But as part of the getting the bank, one of the stipulations was the merger of the two organizations to create a stronger, more fiscally stable organization, mm-hmm. yeah. and that the bank be called Bank of the Arts in perpetuity, and that our name be changed mm-hmm. legally to Craven Arts Council and Gallery. Now, in the arts, New Bern is pretty well, well, it's been known for for over a hundred years as mm-hmm. an arts center, uh, we refer to ourselves as the Athens of the South. It's a little arrogant of us. We used to be the Athens of North Carolina. We used to be a little more humble about it. But even in the mid 1800s, you can read about the Athens of North Carolina referring to uh, mm-hmm. our town. Yeah. And, uh, and today we have a very strong arts culture. We have uh, two, now three theaters operating. We've always had three or four or five the two main ones, of course, Civic and uh, Rivertown. Then there's always been a couple of little ones running around. We're the new kids in the block now. It's the North Carolina History Theater. Mm-hmm. And uh, but but sometimes you don't stop and think just how strong we are in the visual arts, as in the the paintings, the sculpture, that kind of mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, it's it's inter- I came here, you know, from Greenville, which is a town of ninety thousand people, three times the size, and you've got the university and. And I thought they had a pretty strong arts culture. But uh, I came down here to interview when I was hired in 2016 as the gallery director. Uh-huh. And uh, I remember looking at the Art Walk card and I was like, hold up, what? There's like 30 stops on here. You know, whereas in Greenville, there's 12, something like that. Um, it's just there. there's uh-huh. double the amount of galleries, double the theaters. There's just a very strong, yeah. vibrant art scene. For such a small town, it's really outsized. and. Um, Especially after the recession, I mean, a lot of galleries here we able to mm-hmm. continue going strong. Whereas in Greenville, I remember being on the board of a gallery that closed and watching a few few of my friends' galleries all shut down. Slowly yeah. but surely, yeah. But every town has its particular distinct personality, and I think ours, along with the history, is the arts. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have just I've, this town is overrun with artists. Uh, we have we were going to be talking of Laura Gallon, Gammons, who was a friend. She had a little emergency and pulled out. Lynn Jordan agreed to come in instead. Um, we've done some very fine work. Who are some of the other artists in town that, that you particularly admire? Oh, I mean, there's there's a lot of great artists in this oh. town. But, uh, you know, I love Jill Eberly's work. She has a really interesting technique, and she's just really a master of the human form and anatomy and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, you know, I love uh, Joe Clay. He's a woodworker over at Shop Class with me, and I really admire his work. Um, Candace Young, who used to live here, she was an excellent ceramicist, and she yes. would do these very intricate piercings. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, she was. Uh, I I knew her well. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. out in uh, Port Townsend now. In, mm-hmm. in, yeah, in, she in, moved away, but I still Washington. Yes, still love her work. Oh, Elizabeth oh, Spencer at the college. Uh, she's she's excellent too. She does. Oh. Uh, uh, these combined wood and drawing pieces where she like she just built this obelisk thing um, and it's got uh, beautifully drawn flowers and leaves and stuff over it but it's also got fig- a, a carved face in one section and things like that mm-hmm. so she does some really good intricate work and now you familiar all of uh, Norm Robbins oh yes he's, a, he's, mm-hmm. he's in Florida now but he was uh he did a lot of uh, artwork. He, I believe mm-hmm. he's the one who did a lot of art from his days in the Korean War. He did. So he he was actually uh, he his work is now in the uh, Library of Congress. Um, uh, prints of his work and copies of it because mm-hmm. he yeah he took a lot of black and white photos over there and he really got into this technique. I can't remember the name of it anymore. Where you could essentially paint on the negatives and and create these odd like adding yeah. color, but also just straight drawing on them. And he kind of got known for that when he came back to the States. I mean, he's got a lot of uh, interesting pieces out. You can, you can see around town a couple places anyway. We still have a um, few, yeah. But, yeah, it's you know. like Matisse-like almost in life. Uh, very you know, loose, yeah, very everyday scene, too, you know, uh-huh. of uh, people on farms or jugglers on street corners, things like very everyday type thing. Yeah, we're going to hook up and do an interview of him in the next couple of weeks or so if we possibly can. He's just a really fascinating Mm-hmm. crazy guy he was trying to uh, find 
raise funds, I don't know if he ever did or not, to head on over to Korea again. Mm -hmm. He was hoping to spend a few months there getting more pictures, doing more painting. And he's, what, he's up in his 80s, his 90s? Uh, yeah. He's, yeah uh, he's... And still as active as can be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you yourself are a, a sculptor, <laughs> sculptor, are you not? Yeah, so I primarily am a sculptor. I do a bit of mm -hmm. furniture work as well as a woodworker. And uh, cemetery work. And cemetery and work. Cemetery when, the, when, work. When, the, when the need arises. <laughs> cemetery um, work. Yeah. yeah well, we had a, a couple of uh, gates that got stolen over the years and from some of the cemetery plots over there. And they finally located one or two, managed to... Uh, they they thought of doing a lawsuit to get it back and figured it was going to be too costly, so they wound up buying the thing back. And uh, John was over there. I was over there the day they rehung him, and John mm -hmm. was over there. So we essentially welded a thing on the end. So the it used to be, you know, there's just posts and holes. You could just lift them up, walk away. So now we've which is exactly what they did. As yeah, a matter of fact. welded a little <laughs> thing on there. You you need you need some good tools to actually get the gates out now is the thing. So, that, so what sort of what sort of sculpture do you do? Uh, I do mostly human figures recently. I, I've done a lot of things over the years, playing around with uh, techniques and things like that. I actually started as a jeweler, um, but I have a trimmer in my hands, which makes it kind of hard for me to uh, set stones and things like that. So I switched and ended up in sculpture at the time because I still enjoyed metalworking and but I, I've done casting and woodworking and all sorts of stuff. But right now, primarily welded steel. Can we see some of your work at the Bank of the Arts? Uh, no, most of my work is large outdoor public commissions. Okay. So it's kind of, it wouldn't fit through the door, let's put it that way. Or it would so, be very hard to move. So if we're going to go on a road trip just for the John Berger uh, tour... Where do we where do we go? What's some of your, your most interesting stuff, and where we, where will we find it? I've got uh, two really really big pieces commissions I did down in Florida. I've got a, a twelve foot tall stainless steel man made of butterflies. That's the form of a man, but made of butterflies. Uh, four inch monarchs, and that's for the Monarch Art Trail, which just opened I think two weeks ago in uh, between Destin and Panama City in Florida, off of Highway Thirty A. Um, okay. And that, that piece just got dropped off about a month ago. And uh, if you are a diver and ha have access to diving equipment, you can go dive in the Gulf of Mexico. And I have a piece in the Underwater Museum of Art down there of a, uh, a face kind of looking up through the water. And that's for tourism, but it's also for coral reef development. So it's already started. They sent me some photos about six months ago, and it's already starting to grow a little bit. So Cool. And, and whereabouts is that in Florida? Uh, Great and Beach, up in the Panhandle as well, somewhere, right? You know, I, I don't dive, so I'm not exactly sure. They gave me the longitude latitude for it. You'll have to, to hold your breath and go down and have right? a look at one of these. It's about, a, I think they told me it's seven, 37 feet down, something wow. like that. So. Are, you, are you working on any big pieces now? Or? I've got a, a couple pieces I'm going to do for a show in Wilson, North Carolina, Wilson. at Air Arts Council. Okay. Um, and then uh, doing uh, some small commission work, but I think... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this 12-foot figure took a lot of my time. For, for about a month, I was working 16-hour days on it on between my day job and, and it. Uh, and I told my wife I would take a step back and just sort of work on some stuff. We just bought a farm, so I need to uh, oh. go fix some things. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and Wilson, they have all those... Um those wind the whirly gigs the yeah whirly gigs. of all the yes, simpsons it's... whirly gigs those are so cool i uh now we're not talking little handheld whirly no, gigs but no. these things are 60 70 80 feet tall they've mm -hmm. got a old farmer up there yes so he just had a habit or a hobby of making these things on his farm mm -hmm. he he just had a few like sheds and stuff uh -huh. and would just weld them up and uh, there's been a, a, a huge project since uh probably 2015 to they actually mm -hmm. took a lot of them down and had guys weld up any holes uh, grease all the bearings you well, know they've those got a whole of restoration things. office up there but there's a it's about a city block mm -hmm. that if you go up to wilson well worth the visit and you just stand there and look at these things all around you you see any made them out of anything this is gigantic windmill looking thing and it's made primarily out of milkshake mixers Mm -hmm. that he picked up from uh, restaurants all over the country. Yeah, he would grab all, anything he could find. and just. Uh -huh. I actually have a uh, painting by Brenda Bear, who is a fairly well-known uh, artist in Goldsboro, um, but she was friends with Wallace. So in 2016, in our jury show, she entered a painting of him actually welding 
Yeah. So it's him with his hood on, and it's called Wallace oh. at Work. And uh, we ended up we we purchased one piece from that show every year. So we decided uh, she's a well known Eastern North Carolina artist. Okay. He's a, uh, I mean, he's a staple of Wilson, and uh, it was in our budget. So uh, yeah, we purchased that. This is the name that should be uh, better known across the state. Oh yeah, it's oh, yeah. Uh, well, well well deserving. Yeah, people from you know. That I went to school and stuff. They they probably don't know who Wallace Simpson is, but if you say Acid Park, they'll go, "Oh yeah, that's right." Uh-huh. You know, we used to drive up there at two in the morning, and we, uh, we all have our our little known names that are huge names in our own town, uh, like Bayard Wooten here in her photography, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, a large collection over in Raleigh of her works and all. And actually, mm-hmm. we have a, I have a friend who lives out in Seattle, I believe. But grew up here, and he's frantically trying to make a museum of her work here. Oh wow! Uh, uh, he purchased a house down on Front Street, as a matter of fact, oh. uh, down on East Front Street, that big brick house, ball. Mm-hmm. Oh walking yeah, yeah. Up, and he's hoping to turn that into mm-hmm. a museum. Is he a member of the Arts Council? I don't believe so. I don't. But but he is. A <laughs> I gotta throw that in there. Anytime I hear yes, someone yes, yes. new move into the area, well, well he's uh, not coming back. But he's, oh, okay. he's setting up to do it. He's a photographer out there. Okay. He's done a lot of uh, photography of famous people, mm-hmm. and so every so often he'll put stuff up. You can look up him on the Bayard Wooten Facebook page. Okay. But he is obsessed with her. Has written a, a screenplay that he's been trying to get produced and so on. <clears throat> anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about another uh, New Bern well-known man. You'll see his art. You, you can't go through New Bern without finding this guy's art. His murals uh, down there on Captain Ratty's. There's that big mural on Front Street. Uh, many houses or businesses you go into, you'll find these watercolor paintings. I believe they're watercolor on walls. They're just ordinary houses and businesses and everything else. And they always find that little signature, Tagliere. Uh, he's, he's considered Mr. Newburn. But this is a, tell us a little bit about Willie. Yeah, so Willie was a was a super interesting person. We did an exhibit, uh, a retrospective of his work in uh, September of this year. Not too year. long ago, right? Yeah, and uh, doing the research for that was was great. But uh, you know, he started uh, as a cop in New York City, and there's yes. actually an article we have called "The World's Worst Cop." Yeah, he said, uh, in, in five years, I gave out one ticket. One ticket, never arrested anyone. <laughs> Pretty so. awful cop. <laughs> so he, uh, he, didn't, he didn't get very far with that. And uh, he actually, uh, he, he met Bernard Lamont, who was a French muralist, um, walked in his studio one day, and he had his assistants doing something, and he told Bernard, I can do better than that guy. And Bernard, I guess, gave him a paintbrush and was like, let's see. And uh, Bernard hired him, actually. So uh, his first really big project that we're, we're aware of is uh, he did the murals in the swimming pool uh, that were commissioned by Kennedy at the White House. Oh. Yeah, he was uh, an assistant on that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And, and uh, you know, when digging for that, we actually found photos of him through the Kennedy Library. Uh, the murals have been moved to the Kennedy Library now up in right. Boston. Um, but in the photos... Um, we're pretty sure the unidentified assistant is him. You know, yeah, he had a yeah, and he had a, a great habit of putting himself physically into paintings. I mean, I'm not mm-hmm. saying that one, but uh, if, no. if you if you look at the one on Captain Ratty's, he's that guy leaning against a tree, kind of half mm-hmm. asleep. Yeah, and uh, there's a a mural he did at the Broad Street Christian Church. Mm-hmm. It was the uh, Gethsemane scene, and among the disciples, there's Willie Taglieri snoozing away with everybody else. Mm-hmm. So right next to Peter and them, um, he was in. Mm-hmm. There's a big one. A lot of people know the huge painting at the back of Poor Charlie's Antique Mart. That was him as well, and okay. he's in the lower right. Um, it's like a scene of like a town in Mexico or something like right. that. Right. Now, he, when, when he was up in New York, decided he was going to become an artist and throw away his police career. His wife did not approve of that and uh, quickly divorced him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was after that that he met a man from um, down there in the pickle place. Mount, Mount Olive. Olive. Mount, Mount Olive, Olive, who yeah. had gone up to New York to appear on, the, on a radio game show or a TV game show, actually. And the two became friends, and he came down to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And he was only supposed to stay for a year (coughs) to do the uh, murals for the federal courthouse building. All right, and that that actually took a few years to come about, but a judge here has frantically worked hard to get that the, to raise the money for it. Mm-hmm. But then he ended up uh, sticking around after that. He he really enjoyed it, mm-hmm. and uh, you know his bread and butter were these watercolors of houses, um, and he would sometimes he would just set up. 
paint the house, go knock on the door. Hey, I uh, I just painted this uh, watercolor at your house. Do you want to buy it? Yep. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes they'd say no, and he'd go, well, how about for this? Sometimes he'd be like, well, I don't really want it, actually. You can you can have it. But uh, no, walking into my insurance agent, there was a tagliere of their building there. Bryn Glass at their new facility had mm-hmm. a tagliere of their old building. And in doing it, we ran into so many people that were like, oh, my gosh, I think I have one of his pieces. It came with that. You know, people have now started, they leave it with the house. Um, some of them, not everyone. Some people want to take it with them, but the... We ran into at least a few people where the previous owners had a tagliere of their house and decided to let it go with the house when they sold it, which has been really interesting. Mm, yeah. Mm. Now he was uh, his daughter described him as the the true picture of a uh, starving artist. Never had a lot of money. She said we ra- we grew up in a, a poor house. Uh, I think her name is Tony. I've got. The columns I wrote on her, but I'm not very good at scanning. Right yeah, time. Tony and Sammy. Tony and Sammy, and they're both artists themselves. And I think Tony has done some touch up on some of his work to restore it. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think they've done. They did. They did do a touch up on Captain Ratty's before mm-hmm. all the. You know, it used to be the side used to be yellow before that gray went on. They actually had them come in, and um, um, oh, he did the um, oh, what's the architectural term? The triangular area at the top of Savages. Okay. Um, the pirates, um, and they may end up doing that one soon. Okay, it, of course, it needs to touch up. You got a huge mural Cable? up there down at River, down at the convention center. If it was moved there, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, there's one of his there. That was, yeah. It's always fun to to do this because we we ran into, we went to the palace and asked if we could borrow some works from them, and they were gracious enough to let us borrow them or get images. But you know, at mm-hmm. one point, the palace thought the courthouse thought the palace had. The courthouse murals because those were moved out of the courthouse they're not there anymore there's a mm-hmm. different set of murals in there now by a different artist um and we went to the palace and they thought said yeah we have those and then we started looking and we're like these aren't the murals that were in the courthouse they're the wrong size they were similar because we had photos but they weren't right and uh after some digging we realized yeah some of them went to the palace um, and what the or to the convention center and the palace had the original models for the court. So Willie painted okay. small versions, and the palace now has all those. Small now the small versions. Did he he painted those in a, in a building with a Bank of the Arts? It was Bank building? of the Arts. That's yeah. what I was thinking. It he was allowed to rent it, I believe, for like a dollar a month. It, this was before it was Bank of the Arts, and it was, uh, you know. Um, Back in the seventies, maybe. Yeah, it was the the bank no longer was using it, and the um, the it, they had yet to come up with the idea of letting us use it. So it was kind of a boarded up building, and he needed some space, so he did it in there. Okay, and one of my favorite paintings of his is hanging up in City Hall on the stairwell. There, it's a a night scene of of the City Hall, I think, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and in winter, and it's it's a, he, if you ever want to, I mean, you can walk in there anytime you want. You go mm-hmm. up the steps; they don't have armed guards yet. No, nope, no, nope. uh, he did a whole series of those, and they are. Uh, excuse me, he did Christmas cards based off that series. Mm-hmm. So there's one of uh, the palace in in the winter, yep. and he's often Santa in those. If you look, it, there's he. Well, he had the beard. Mm-hmm, exactly, and. Uh, uh, he, he painted those because, you know, he moved down here and was like, I never get to see snow anymore. And he really wanted to see what it would look like snowy. So he, uh-huh. you know, created oh, it. I myself am absolutely, absolutely convinced that God invented calendars for snow. That, that's, <laughs> where, that's where I'm happy to see the snow. But That's, that's why I keep moving south, so <laughs> to get away from it. Yes, I've, I've stepped outside today and it's like, man, we should have gone three states further south. <laughs> we came down here. But, uh, now, it was uh, just a couple of years ago, back in 2018, in fact, that they found one of his old murals in one of the Flames' old buildings, mm-hmm, uh, Smoke mm-hmm. Flame. And uh, they're in there tearing it down or, or tearing down the walls, uh, getting ready to re-gut it. And a couple of local artists who were looking for a, a studio saw them there and um, there there are attempts to find a permanent home for it. there are talks going on and uh, to mm-hmm. to restore it as well mm-hmm. but it's it's a fascinating piece it's all these panels they're basically what is it uh, four and a half feet tall mm-hmm. uh, 44 feet long in numerous panels next to each other and uh, i went down there when they were taking them down and took a lot of pictures and so on. in fact i had the whole mural 
printed and hanging on the wall of Sun Journal as long as I was there. Um, and it took about about three or four feet in mm -hmm. width. And these panels were anything, they were somewhere like two or three feet wide, a couple or four feet wide. The width of the panels made no sense at all. Yes, it's on Masonite. Very yeah. back and forth. Uh, yeah, you wonder. Uh, were they what pieces was he had set around? Yeah, they, 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 yeah, they're just totally. And it's an old scene of of a waterfront mm -hmm. and uh, all kinds of sailing ships across it. I counted 33 ships in that thing. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's the rowboat, and sitting in the rowboat is Willie Tagliari waving at the crowd. He's also and got a bottle of wine in one hand too. Yes, <laughs> so a, he, I understand he was quite fond of of an occasional yeah. cup there. So he was a just just an interesting guy. Yeah, yeah, and that piece, yeah, the historical society has it right now, but it's a right. It is, you know, uh, yeah, it's it pretty needs battered. Be, it needs some. It needs some love. Uh, you know, you used to be able to smoke in the flame, so <laughs> that's. That alone will uh, will put a, a coat of tar on a surface yes. of a painting. So yeah, that, the mm -hmm. beads were hanging just above the booths, going around the walls mm -hmm. there apparently. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, so do you have anything coming up soon at all, or you know, beyond Santa Paul's, we've got lots of other stuff. We have a mm -hmm. cash raffle right now that's to support our new public art piece, which is called Piece by Piece. Um, and uh, a lot of people have helped us with this already, but we folded a thousand cranes, origami cranes. Okay. Out of a, I wonder what those are about. Yeah, that's Tyvek, which is plastic, but it acts like paper, and they've been decorated. So uh, if you, I, I never noticed this till someone brought it to my attention. There's an old billboard pole behind Crema Brew uh, on Broad Street, you know, uh -huh. and it's on Danny Batten's uh, 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 silkscreen shop, you know, where they make the T-shirts and stuff. And Danny said, uh, you know, if you guys can figure out something cool to do with it, you can use that pole. So we're going to suspend. We're going to have a, a big steel ring and suspend a thousand cranes off of that steel oh. pole. Well, when um, are you going to do that? We're going to install. We're going to shoot for May 1st installation. We really wanted to get it done this year. Mm -hmm. But um, supply chain issues, ordering materials and things like that just became too much of an effort to uh, start, stop. So we've decided to shoot May 1st. Uh, next year, but we have a raffle going on. People can buy tickets for ten bucks, and the money uh, they they can win five hundred. Um, and but all the money raised goes to the uh, the project to help offset the costs. Now, will that be a permanent uh, display? It will be. We're gonna. Well, it will be long term. Let's uh, you know, no no public art. I think is permanent. Oh, those such thing as permanent. I yeah. Guess. So, uh, but we're hoping with it being tie back, you know, the, they won't dissolve. And then the big concern became hurricanes, so we're going to dip them in a resin to harden them a little bit more mm -hmm. um, before they go out there. But, cool. It's just going to be like a mobile, actually, so it'll be moving um, in the wind? Or? We really wanted it to be, but after some talks um, you know, with hurricanes, mm -hmm. we decided to secure yeah. both ends of the of uh, they'll, they'll be on cables, actually, right. but we'll secure both ends, top and bottom, because of the, the concern about hurricanes and... Uh, if they were free, you know, they'd tangle up or hit things or they'd yeah. suffer a lot more damage. And um, I was like, well, I'm not going. The, the pole's 35 feet tall, so I'm not going out there to take them down every time there's a hurricane. So, <laughs> That's true. Uh, Maybe you can get folks a cream of brew to go out. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm just, Donovan won't mind, will he? Yeah, when you're taking in the chairs, can you climb up and yeah. take down those uh, cranes while you're at it? You'd yeah. have to really be caffeinated, I think. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to get caffeinated, that is the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's our other big thing, but we've um, always got tons. You know, we've got concerts. Art Walk is always the second yeah. Friday of the month. Pretty soon it'll be the uh, Children's Valentine's Day card sale, which benefits the teachers in Craven County. Um, and all the Valentine's cards at three dollars and fifty cents. So, so it's a really great way. And and some of them are really classic hearts cut out, but some of them are very strange and fun. And you yeah. you don't know what the kid was thinking. But I always have fun going through and buying buying a good handful. And uh, mm -hmm. my wife knows that all cards from me pretty much come out of this sale. And I buy enough to last through the year. Anytime I mess up. Yeah. So. Uh, I would imagine, you know, that if you're looking for a Christmas present for mm -hmm. someone that uh, you value uh -huh. and or love, you can 
stop by the Bank of the Arts and, and check yeah, out the paintings yeah. and the sculptures mm-hmm. and uh, the various artworks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're open Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we have our main gallery, which is Critters right now, but we also have what we call the Sales Gallery, yeah. um, which is just uh, lots of different things. and Everything from photographs to paintings to there's even some interesting walking sticks in there. Walking for sale. stick, pot holders. We've got some local quilters and, you know, cards, uh Little fun sculpture. Ba- yeah. There's a great back scratcher in there I keep looking at. You know, <laughs> earrings, jewelry, all sorts of fun stuff. You, know? you can always go to Walmart or somewhere and get your mm-hmm. black velvet Jesus or your basic uh, stuff. But if you want something that's going to really mean something mm-hmm. yeah, and have some value to it and also support the local the local market. And this year with all the, the giant boats full of boxes floating offshore and not coming ashore and everything, this is a great year to get out and do that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, last, last weekend, my wife and I uh, came into town right here in Middle Street and mm-hmm. over, in, over in Craven Street and uh, picked up our Christmas presents at local shops, uh, mm-hmm. things that were made here in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, I think that's, that's important to do. Mm-hmm. Now the art walk is yours, right? You guys sponsor. We the art organize walk? it. Yeah. So tell us how, tell us how that works. Uh, it's uh, about what once a month, once a quarter, or it's uh, once a month. It's always mm-hmm. the second Friday of the month, and it's a self guided tour of all the galleries. So we all kind of make sure that we're open late that night, and that's the night we really try and have our artists there, or, or you know, musicians or whatever, whatever the organizations are trying to do. Uh, there so that they can talk to the people, talk to them about their work, things like that. So there's uh, us, there's a community artist gallery right down the street from us. Uh, of course, you've got uh, Andrea Owens and Artisan Square and uh, mm-hmm. uh, the Studio 2323B Creative, which is uh, behind uh, the coffee shop on Middle Street. Mm-hmm. Um, that's got Vicky Vitale and Donna Slade and Martha. Um, but there's a, you know, greater good. I, I'm not sure of their status, if they're still open, but I know they, so it's sort of a meet the artist. Exactly. But yeah, they'll be in their studios where, you know, usually painting or, or just, you know, there, and it's Mm -hmm. a great time to talk to them, learn about their work, their process. Usually there's some free wine, you know, and uh, and is just outside as well as inside. Ever any outside displays anytime? Or? Sometimes there are. Yeah, that's kind of on the individual artist. So uh-huh. uh, that requires you know a city permit, uh, a peddler's license, essentially, uh, to set up on the street and some some business permission. So we're always happy to explain the process, but we don't organize the outside part. Right, it just becomes <laughs> a, a too much of a. Uh, you know, getting involved in like permits and stuff. So, um, but we definitely, we, we try and support any artist that wants to join and uh, we'd love to see more creative spaces for mm-hmm. artists. You know, I and think. So if an artist does not have a specific studio, say the artist who works basically out of her house, mm-hmm. they can come in and find a place to work for this. Yeah, they can talk to some local, bi- we can give some suggestions of people we know who have let artists set up in the past. We can also give them gallery suggestions. Um, I know mm-hmm. Vicky and, and Andrea would really love to see the Artisan Square, which is the parking lot behind our building, um, where Brewery 99 used to be, um, become more of a open-air artist market. You know, that's kind mm-hmm. of their real, their hope and intent, and we'd love to see that too. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's it's also where everyone parks. <laughs> so I think they're, they're still sorting it out, but I think no, it would be a great We've got idea. this lovely work right under this uh, Chevrolet. Right. right? So. Well, one guy <laughs> sat there and painted a, a car one time, you know. It's pretty <laughs> there you cool. Go. I think they should just, you know, give us yeah. the Elks building, and then we can turn that oh. into an artist. Yeah, I understand. It's just been sold, so. Uh, um, well, maybe he, that been, guy can give it to us. Uh, there, there you go. It's, and maybe an endowment to fix yeah. it up because it needs some work. <laughs> it did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I took a tour through there once, and uh, I went up on the roof, actually, and took a, a photograph, an imitation of a fire, of the photograph taken by George Moulton back in 1922 during the oh, fire. Wow. Mm-hmm. And it, it showed all the blaze and everything. So we went up there and took a, a camera and took a, an imitation photo of the same scene for comparison. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, going through that building, it was the, the shattered glass. Uh, there is a very interestingly long dead pigeon on the floor in one of the front mm-hmm. rooms. It's uh, skeletal bones and beaks and a few feathers laying around, but it made an interesting photograph. Yeah, yeah. That's... Uh, 
But, but yeah. Uh, now, if we want, I've never gone to an art walk, and I want to go. What do I do? And and what you, do I expect? How do, you, how do I go about it? You uh, you can get the card for it, which has every month we produce a card, so it tells you which artists are going to be <laughs> where. Um, you can get that on our website, on our social media channels, or you can get a physical one at any of the locations that are on the Art Walk or also convention center, hotels. We drop them off lots of places. So you mm-hmm. can find it, look at the map, kind of decide where you want to go, what order you want to go in. And then it's self-guided. So from five to eight, just to kind of walk around and uh, see what everyone's doing and things like that. And maybe pick up a little work while you're out there. Exactly. Work. It'll be interesting. Barry Mary's going to be happening in the same December is always a really busy one because you've got all uh-huh. the Barry Mary events and art walk. And, and they're going to be at the same time or? You know, they usually have something going on during this. I think uh, yeah. I'm not exactly sure what it'll be this year, but they usually have some some sort of event going on at the same time. Okay. Yeah. And there's there's not a cost to this, or there is a cost. There. Nope, no, ticket nope. price. I mean, if you go to a restaurant them. and eat food, there's a cost to that. Yeah, or if you, but uh, all the yeah, artists you absolutely have to have that work we're working on. Exactly, <laughs> but uh, no, there's no cost to it. Every you know, you go in each of the shops and look around for free. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's a, just a really fun night to uh, to get out and and uh, see people. You'll see a lot of your friends, a lot a lot of Newburn people. Now, do you know about how many artists you have who are uh, members of the arts gallery? You know, we we probably exhibit. It varies from month to month, mm-hmm. quite quite wildly, depending on the what's in the main gallery. But right. Our yeah. sales gallery, we estimate we have about a hundred artists. It's somewhere, um, somewhere around that number. We just did a mailing trying to. And uh, how far all. out do these artists go geographically from our area? Um, you know, we've got a uh, Jacksonville. Um, uh-huh. We have one in Wilson, but we try to, with at least the sales area, the intent is to stay local, okay. stay at the very least, you know, east of 95 and along the 70 mm-hmm. corridor. So if a uh, pair here decides to pick up his welding rod and mm-hmm. do some work out in Oriental, he can join the Bank yeah. of the Arts, even though he's not craving Oh, anymore. yes, yes. We love, yeah, we, we have, uh, we've got some artists from Oriental, um, uh-huh. and um, we're happy to have them. Um, We've got, I can't remember his name, but we've got a plain air artist from down there that's pretty good. Um, Steve Zatowski is down in Jacksonville. He's a metal worker. We've got uh, uh, Susan Henry in, yes. in, in Oriental. She's, uh, she's we, been around for a long time. And I, uh, I don't know. Susan if, Cheatham uh, also. I don't know if we have any of Susan Henry's work mm-hmm. in stock currently, but I know we have. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So, she's, uh, yeah. She's really good. Uh, yeah, I was uh, president of the Pamlico County Arts Council. For five years and i have the scars to prove it uh-huh. uh, and so uh artists are violent people <laughs> <laughs> well no it, it, the arts game is a violent, right. uh, violent contact sport sometimes but uh, the burning question i have john is how do you become a member of the craven well to be you know we have a membership program and it's fifty dollars for an individual um and uh, that entitles you to a slew of benefits including our monthly newsletter uh, discounts to our concerts and other types of, of ticketed events. Um, also sort of, discounts to uh, enter. And discounts to enter exhibitions. So uh, anytime we do an entry fee on an exhibit, if you're a member, um, you're going to get some sort of discount unless it's a very nominal fee. You know, we did a show called Art Cube. The three was fee was $3. I couldn't discount it anymore. But uh, right. we're talking about doing a, a show soon called Roy G. Biv. Um Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And each panel in the main gallery will be art aligned with that color palette, creating, you know, as you walk through a transitional rainbow of our main gallery. Very so, cool. Yeah, the call for that will probably open uh, when we get back from Christmas break, so about January 4th, something Sounds like that. Sounds very interesting. Yeah. So well, there, there are all kinds of benefits then that accrue for becoming a member. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, there's uh, that, and, you know, if you go high enough, you can get – Things like discounts in the sales gallery, discounts on rentals. Now, what kind of support does an artist get? I mean, aside from discounts, aside from mm-hmm. the, the financial mm-hmm. end of it, how do how do you support artists in general? So we we offer a couple things. Our, you know, our big the big thing is going to be our artist support grant. So every year we offer grants of five hundred or a thousand dollars to artists. It's always due in September, and the goal is something to advance your career. Now that can be. Uh, materials for a sculpture or a painting, um, but that can also be framing. You know, if you, I've, you've created a beautiful mm-hmm. series of work, but framing's so expensive, 
Um, it can be a web, you know, uh, especially during COVID-19, we, we gave out two or three grants that were mm. um, to create webs, good new websites with online sales platforms. Because that can that it was, be travel? Yeah, no. It can be travel, actually. That's a, a nature photographer wants to do a, a big display and they want mm -hmm. to go out to this place and, and maybe yeah. apply to get the cost to go out there. And, and it can that. be that, yeah, yep, yep. So it, it can be travel. It can be classes, you know, and that can include travel too. You know, people, I've, I've admired this artist. I want to take a workshop with them and... Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you can uh, apply for that. Um, so it's it's the real thing is uh, the narrative and, and showing the panelists. I don't judge it, but uh, I get a group of artists to judge it for me and give me feedback on it. Is uh, how is this going to help you as an artist really advance your career? Mm -hmm. We also do other stuff in addition to our exhibits and, mm -hmm. and opportunities to sell work. Um, we offer arts advising. You know, we're not tax or legal professionals, but um, if you've got a, a question about why would I might want to do an LLC as opposed to just keeping my art business as something that adds on to my taxes and, and things like that. You know, we can give you some advice on, on those sorts of things mm -hmm. and where to find art shows beyond us because there's... Now, can you get lot. technique advice, that kind of thing? Um, if we know it, we I will be know. happy to give it to you. But if we don't, we will send you in the direction of someone who does. We've got okay. great relationships with the Twin Rivers Artists Association and the Coastal Photo Club and, uh -huh. and all of that. Our, ours is more of that arts admin, arts professional in that we're really good at advising. Mm -hmm. um, I've had people come in, though, and ask me a welding question, and I'm happy to give them advice on that, too. Okay. Don't you also give grants to, to arts organizations? We do, yeah. Grassroots yeah. grants as grassroots, well, where yeah. we give grants to nonprofits and uh, uh, to do arts programming in our community. Yeah. Um, so we, we do that cycle every year, and it's due about the same time. Yes, so. yes, yes. I remember that, that cycle, and I remember mm -hmm. doing the reports. Uh, yes, yes, that is always a, a fun part of the year. Um, um, and our, our artist support yeah. grant, so our grassroots is county, but um, we are actually the administrators for Region 3. So if you are in um, Craven, Jones, Carteret, Pamlico, Onslow, Lenore, or Duplin County, if you're an artist and you want to apply, we admin grants for all of those, for individual artists. Okay. If you want organizational grants, you go to your local county arts council. Mm -hmm. You also do uh, programs in the schools? You know, we do some. We, we provide support to them. We, yeah. we currently don't have any big programs inside the schools, but we do things to help raise money and show work and things yeah. like that. Um, we often get uh, materials donated that we can't use, um, mm -hmm. so we'll kind of let the mm -hmm. teachers know if someone wants this. Yeah. We have it. Please come One of the it. things that, that we did in, in Pamlico, this is how the Pamlico, Pamlico Arts Council started, actually, uh, was because uh, uh, some folks in Pamlico were concerned about a lack of art education in the schools. Mm -hmm. And so we have uh, traditionally, uh, I don't know what's happening now since I mm -hmm. stopped being president. I, I just sort of you know turned the whole thing over to whoever. Yeah. But uh, we would have uh, two artists, uh, either visual artists, performing artists, um, uh, or any other kind of artist, uh, uh, do a three-day residency mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. uh, one of the schools, either high school, primary school, middle school. And I remember one of the one of the one of the coolest ones was uh, uh, our former uh, poet laureate Shelby Stevenson. Oh yes, mm -hmm. who was just a wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful guy. Uh, uh, we would, would would show up and, and and do a program over over three days and other. Uh, mm -hmm. One of our great writers, Sheila Turnage. I don't know that you know her. She's a mm -hmm. writer of uh, of uh, young adult fiction. She's had some uh, really uh, uh, wonderful uh, books published. She would show mm -hmm. up, and uh, you know, and that was a, that was a big event. We uh, we've had Shelby uh, judge our poetry contest in oh, the good. past, and he's always good. been super gracious and even returned. You know, we we pay all our jurors for their time, and, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure every year he's said, you know, I just just yeah. keep it. I don't know. I'm doing this, you know, to, to help kids and stuff. Um, and we, you know, uh, we're trying right now. We actually just helped uh, Craven County apply for a grant and hook them up for to do a two-week residency um, with uh, military-connected families at Havelock High and uh, another school down in Havelock. Um, but we're just waiting to hear. That's, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 
on the funding and whether that's yeah. the North Carolina with COVID, uh, most project grants actually got uh, taken down and were turned into operational support because okay. a lot of us needed some extra cash flow just to keep the doors open. Uh-huh. Um, Good. But they're coming back. So that okay. residency that um, we're applying for this program and we're going to see what happens with it. So you have some connections with literary art as well then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we do a poetry contest every year as part of our, uh, mm-hmm. our an ekphrastic poetry contest, which is a, a, a art inspired by other art. So we do a big national jury show and we ask poets to write poems based off the artworks in that show. They tell us which piece, and and we get cool. that juried. Um, the blending, then. Mm-hmm, exactly, and uh, uh, something I I've uh, in the back of my mind ever since I, I got into arts admin, and uh, it's finally it, it's coming and it's going to happen. Is um, uh, 2023 is the hundredth anver- anniversary of Kail Gibran's The Prophet, oh. so we're going to do uh, a literary festival centered around uh, his life and that work. Uh, if you're familiar with it, yes. Um, mm-hmm. so, so we're going to do uh, an art exhibit of art inspired by his work. Um, we're in talks now trying to, to figure out exactly how long it'll be. But in 2023, yeah, we're going to do um, some sort of big festival tied, mm-hmm. to, tied to his life. Now, have you ever considered anything like short fiction contests, that kind of thing? You know, I would love for us to do more. And, and um, it's a... Uh, 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 a time thing, but yeah, I think a short fiction contest would be great. Um, you know, we uh-huh. do the, we've given grants out to help writers publish stuff and things like yeah, that yeah. Um, to get stuff published. But uh, yeah, a the, short fiction contest could be fun. Yeah, down the road, I'd like to see us do a, a local uh, short play, a short drama. I was just about to say there that. You go. Read my that mind. would be a, a great thing for us to do. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Let people, local people, have a, a little piece. I mean, I turn in, I've had one guy already turn in. Ken Hess gave me a little play he wants to see us oh, put on. It's about oh, a five-page play of two 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 guys from the Bronx in a in a rest home arguing about uh, living in New Boyne. <laughs> and it, it's an entertaining little slice yeah, of life yeah. piece. Yeah, but yeah. It, it'd be great yeah. to... Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and there's it, lots of other, you know. There's, there, there's our first coming cooperative venture. There we Bank go. There we us. go. But, you know, uh, Next Chapter runs a, a, a month, or is it quarterly publication, too. You that's know, right. There's, there's, that's right. Uh, Michelle Garen Fly. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's a, that's a great little publication. I've got, uh, I, I don't think I have the most recent issue. I think it just came out, but I've got the other ones. Yeah. Um, and it's great to read those. Mm-hmm. Um um, and yeah, there's yeah, we've got so many theater. You know, you've got you yep. and uh, Civic and every. And, you know, yeah. it is it all. It is a very interesting town for the. Yeah, and our, our theater be a history theater as well as a local arts theater. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it it gives us extra opportunity to to employ local talent. And you know, it otherwise might be not not be done. We are making history as we as we go. So yes, yes, indeed. So there we are. So uh, we're we're at that wrap up time. We have got about twenty eight seconds to go, twenty seven seconds to go. I uh, want to want to thank John for being here with us. It went well. Uh, yes. Thank you guys you. for having me. It was oh, a lot of fun. Yeah. We we will come dragging you back, kicking All and right. in the yes. future again. Uh, thank you for <laughs> filling in coffee. at that last moment. <laughs> we make good coffee here. We do that. Uh, we our our producer in there is Eric Queen, is the coffee maker extraordinaire. <laughs> 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 and he stayed wide awake all through this, even though he's not an art, artist and man himself. So we appreciate that. Thank you all for coming. We'll see you in another week. Here's a question.